Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm installing the latest addition to our off-grid energy storage here on the homestead. This is the Powerbox G2, a 10 kilowatt lithium ion phosphate all-in-one battery built by a company called Dynas. Now these are the latest in off-grid energy storage solutions. Um, it's only six weeks on the market, so it's pretty new. And we've got two of them here totaling up 20 kilowatts of energy storage. Each battery comes with all the kit that you'll need, the heavy duty DC cables, ethernet cables, uh, fixings, and your wall mounted bracket mounted onto the wall. And another great feature about these is they're built to IP65 standards, so they're meant for fitting in an outdoor environment. So I'm gonna go ahead, strip out the old system, we'll get these units installed and see how we can link them up with the 11 kilowatt all-in-one inverter. Hi, how's it going? And um, making progress, little by little I suppose. I'm gonna mount the two of them in on, on the wood down below. I'll just get all this out of the way and I can bracket them up against the wall so that the weight isn't being held on mm -hmm. the wall itself, but it's supported underneath, um, but just so that they don't tip over. Fitting the wall brackets is really straightforward, pretty much like fitting a TV onto the wall. And the kit comes with everything you need, even a template for where to drill your holes. Um, this is the same size as the uh, battery itself. So where you drill those four holes is where your brackets go. They even supply all the wall bolts, all the screws, and the screws for the back of the units to mount into the brackets. Everything comes in the kit, which is pretty handy. With the weight of these being what it is, I'm gonna to have to get some help from the boss to lift it into place. Are you ready for some lifting? No. Nope. <laughs> Be grand. It's really heavy. Okay, you ready? One, two, two and Oh. Well done. Oh, that's f***ing heavy. Well done. That's one in place. Now for the next one. Okay. I can't. Not on this side. Oh, go on, you s***. Go on, you. 100 kilos, huh? Not Sorry. Not so shabby, not too shabby. Okay, on to the next bit now. Get them wired you built, up. You built the shed perfectly to fit just two of them in there. That's a happy coincidence, <laughs> that is. <laughs> So now that Claude and I have got the two batteries physically in place, I've called in the help of an expert to help me connect them up to the inverter itself, as I've never worked with CAN systems before. This is Porig. Porig's been working in the solar industry for many, many years now, and he's built a bigger off-grid system in his own place than we have here, even though he lives in an urban area. So Porig, tell us about the system you have running in your place. Yeah, Michael, I have... Uh... 11.2 kilowatt system there or thereabouts. I have two inverters. I have a Solus 8 kilowatt hybrid inverter. Or I have about 7.6 kilowatts on the 8 kilowatt inverter and I have 4.7 kilowatts on the 4.6 kilowatt inverter. Uh, I live in an urban area so I have folks to go off grid so I do as well. Um, and I can make sure to contact the rod my fuse board that when the house loses power and it drops I initiate a 63 amp fuse and and you set all that up yourself? Uh, with the help of a friend. You, you have some base of knowledge, you really do. And thank you so much for, for offering to come and help us out here today. Um, do you know, with the, with the dinos now, we'll go ahead and we'll set them up in a couple of minutes because this, this is new to me. I'm, I'm an analogue sort of, sort of setup guy. You know, I can do all that stuff, but, but setting up the latest and greatest now. So thanks a million for coming out and helping me. Um, if, if anyone out there wants to hear more from Porig, do let us know in the comments down below and, uh, and we'll try and get some more knowledge out of his head because this, this guy knows his stuff and he's been doing it for years and uh, we're lucky to have him here with us today. So let's go ahead and set him up. What do you think? Dines have done it. They've put the heated pads in it that allows the batteries to go outside for cold, for cold weather. And then you have the fire suppressing system built into it, which still allows that quantity of people that still want to put them in the attic. Okay. You know, you're fire suppressing, you know that your, your insurance on your house is still going to be valid. You can prove that the battery has fire suppressing in it and it works on doesn't cause any hassle. From inverter into can in, okay. and then from first battery to the second battery, it's can out to can in, and then if oh, you don't have another yeah. battery in the lane after it, you put the terminator block into the can to can out. Ah, and it just stops right. communication, confusion in the cans and the inverter, and you put it in. DC isolators in the on position, master is set, this is the master, mm -hmm. so just gonna hold the power switch down for three seconds, and the light should come on. 
There we go. Look at that, that's cool, isn't it? So DC's turned off from the panels. DC's off, so we're yeah. going to expect the battery now to start the inverter up. So this is the PV area in the roof. PV on the roof, yeah. 3.4, 3, 3, 3 kilowatts, is it? 3 and a bit. Okay, yeah. let's go to PV area 1. See about 4 kilowatts in the roof, hopefully. 600. 900. 1.3. Doesn't it? Do you, do you remember I did the video with it? It sounds like an airplane. Sounds like a jet, yeah. 2.3. So that's what it's pulling from the roof right now. It's slowly letting more and more through. So I suppose there's only one thing left to do now at this stage, isn't there? Want to test on them now? Let's test them out. Let's test them out. Yeah. So will we put a 9 kilowatt load on it? <laughs> Let's try this. What Michael has done here, he's turned off the solar system for this array and the solar system for this array. So what's keeping the, bat the inverter alive at the minute is just the batteries. Okay, so he's going to turn on the electric shower which pulls about 9 kilowatts, maybe 10 kilowatts starting. So it's exclusively all coming from the batteries. The 185 watts that you see here is running the house. There we go, 9.76 from the batteries. Didn't even flutter. There you have it, folks. 9.67 folks running exclusively from the batteries. Auric. That's unbelievable. Thank you so yeah. much for all your help. That's Delighted fantastic. To see you. Good performance out of it and what it's, what it's capable Do you know, of we ran the shower both with solar and the batteries and also just on the batteries on their own. And it's it's pulling at nine nine and a bit over nine and a half kilowatts. Not a brother to it like, you know. Okay, it's been five full days since the install, with today being day number six, and I can now give some proper feedback on the performance of these Powerbox G2s. In that period of time, we've taken in 0.1 of a megawatt or 100 kilowatts from the solar, and we've used 57 and a bit kilowatts inside in the house. Compared to the lead acid systems, these have been a total game changer. Although there have been two minor glitches with the system. First of all, overnight, we like to run a couple of devices, multiple lights, couple of tellies, fridges, and uh, Clodagh likes to run the washing machine overnight so that the laundry can go out to dry on the line the following morning. Every morning I've come out to check the status of these batteries and it has been above 70% every time. So we've only taken 30% out of them overnight, even with all those devices running. So the two minor glitches we're having, first of all starts with the Dynas app, the mobile app itself. It took a few days to actually start giving readings on the battery charge level. Now it has started doing that finally today on day number six, but it's still not giving power in and power out readings as a cumulative figure. So maybe that'll change over time. And I have updated the app as well. So hopefully that'll change over time. The second problem we're having is with the CAN bus communication. The inverter would not communicate with the batteries and I found out why, which is simply to do with the cable itself. The cable that was supplied with the batteries is designed for solace inverters. So the pin out on the uh, RJ45 end is different. Now I've ordered a little crimp and connector kit. So I'm going to do a DIY job on this cable according to the pin outs that are in the manuals of both the Dynas and the inverter. So I'll rewire that and readdress the issue when that cable comes. Overall guys, these batteries have performed exceptionally well compared to the lead acids that we used to use. We can now live a completely modern lifestyle without having to be conservative with our energy usage and know that we'll still have power to spare. Will that change in winter time? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Auric, once again, thank you so much. That's fantastic.